right. Uh, welcome everybody to this Channel Vision Magazine webinar. And today we're joined by CVX Expo 24 Platinum sponsor, New Horizon Communications, also known as NHC, also known as the communication stack provider. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at how having multiple options for SD-WAN is the key to selling more intelligent edge solutions. I'm your moderator, Brady Hicks, the managing editor of Channel Vision Magazine, and joining us today are your hosts. Uh, first up, we have NHC's Vice President, Marketing and Business Development, Glenn Nelson. Glenn, how are you doing today? Great, great, Brady. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Of course, yeah, and we're excited to have you and to talk with you as well as Brent. Uh, we have NHC's VP Managed Services, Brent Lucas, joining Glenn. What's up, Brent? Good afternoon, Brady. Glad to be here. Very excited to have you guys, like I said. Now, before I turn it over to you, I want to let everyone know that NHC is offering uh, $100 Amazon gift cards to two lucky uh, TSDs or trusted advisors that attend this webinar and stay through the entire presentation. So you are going to want to stick around for that. I also want to remind you guys that NHC created this webinar to provide you with information. So if you have any questions that kind of pop up along the way, simply go to the Q&A icon at the bottom of the page. We'll present those questions uh, once the presentation is finished. All right, uh, enough from me. I'm going to turn it over to Glenn and Brent. Thank you, Brady. Okay, so let's kick it off. So before we kick off the discussion over, uh, over SD-WAN and, and how sticky it is for, for you folks to sell SD-WAN, let's just quickly uh, do a quick review of NHC uh, for those folks that are on that aren't familiar with, with NHC. We started back in uh, 2002. In fact, uh, yesterday was our 22nd anniversary. Um, we're the, we are the communication stack provider. And what we mean by stack is a group of solutions that we, uh, that we sell to, to, to end, end user communities. And um, the stack is kind of into three areas three layers. And you can see that kind of in the background here. Uh, the red layer is everything to do with network. Uh, so that's uh, both landline service, wireless service, anything to do with access to get to that end customer. Uh, the blue, the middle layer is our overlay product. Uh, we have our own Metaswitch network. Uh, we also have a, access to a, a variety of overlay services. Uh, some Even some basic SD-WAN fits into this category. Um, and that's anything over the internet uh, that we're providing. And then the top layer, that gray stack, that is managed services. So that's going to be managed UCAS, managed Wi-Fi, all of those things. So those are our stack solutions. Um, and that's why we call ourselves the uh, communication stack provider. We're nationwide, uh, all 50 states plus Canada. Um, we're headquartered in Concord, Massachusetts, outside of Boston. And we also have facilities in... Um, uh, in New York, uh, and we also have facilities uh, in, in Fort Myers, Florida for our uh, uh, customer service 7 by 24 hour knock. We really emphasize this is important for, uh, for, that, for that customer experience, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then it's 100% stateside uh, support teams. Everybody that supports New Horizon is a New Horizon employee, and they are 100% stateside. We wrap the solutions, the the, the great customer service we provide, all of that around very user-friendly portals for both our partner community as well as, as end users. And we are channel-driven only from day one. That is our mission. And our mission then is to provide for our partners, for our, for our TAs and for our TSDs, as well as for the end customer, the best experience they can possibly get out of a communication service provider. That's what we strive for every day. So today we're gonna to talk about the exciting SD-WAN market, kind of where it's going, why we think it's so important for this channel, all the opportunities to sell and grow with that. Um, selling on the edge, so sort of, uh, we'll talk a little bit about SD-WAN and we'll also talk a little bit about um, uh, edge, edge computing and edge networking as it relates to edge computing. Uh, and we'll talk about our stack edge solutions. Uh, we'll also do a technical uh, overview and we'll do some case studies and we'll do some Q and A. So figure three, three parts of, of today. First is all the market potential, 
Uh, the second is how do I sell these more complex services? We give you some ideas on that based upon our experiences. And then the third part uh, where Brent comes in, we'll be talking about all the flavors of SD-WAN that we have, along with some case studies and a little bit of a technical overview. So the fastest growing strategic solution in our channel, I mean strategic solution, is SD-WAN. So why do we call it strategic? Why is it sticky? Well, because once you're involved this far up the stack in terms of the importance of networking for that end customer, you are really heavily involved with that customer's operation. You're providing them with very mission critical communications and you're giving them the monitoring tools, perhaps a security as well, uh, to be able to support their communications throughout their enterprise. That's a very far cry from just supplying a broadband connection. So we believe that all of the channel community should be striving to get customers to buy more complex things like this because those more complex things will bring you into the decision-making process and, and, and establish a very long-term relationship with the customer. Multiple market forecasters predict the you know, compound annual growth rate of between 25 and 35% over the next 10 years. When you consider that access that we sell so much of is maybe a growth uh, of, of one to 5%, 25 to 35% is monumental. This is how we grow our businesses together. Annual expending is expecting to exceed $100 billion by the end of the decade. So this, this is really great stuff to, to sell and, and very sticky and very long-term uh, for, for you and for the customer. So the fastest growing segment of SD-WAN uh, by a consulting firm that we pulled some research from, Prescient and Strategic Intelligence, is the service provider managed solution. So with SD-WAN, there's really two types of packages. One is a uh, customer or enterprise provided uh, package, and the other one would be one that's offered through a customer service or service provider package. Obviously for us, the service provider is the critical one for us, and that is also the fastest growing uh, segment of the SD-WAN marketplace. So TAs and TSDs, you guys sell a lot of access and a growing percentage of that access are circuits that are sold associated with SD-WAN. And, and why is that the case? Well, the first case is, why do we sell SD-WAN? Well, the first thing is it, costs co it cuts costs over the old legacy private lines and MPLS. There is no question for anybody who has SD-WAN today that they saved money over the old MPLS type network. The next one is that it provides that quality of service, optimizing the use of bandwidth across the end customer's network, a very important feature uh, for SD-WAN. Third one is it prioritizes the performance of mission critical applications. So the end customer through the management features of SD-WAN, they can pick which applications that they wanna run that are mission critical that would have a higher prioritization uh, over the network access that they're using. And lastly, in this case, it definitely improves network reliability. Why? Because I might be running two hots at the same time, two hot access circuits into that SD-WAN at the same time. I might be running one wireless FWA and one and, and one terrestrial uh, for like the maximum amount of uh, you know, availability or uptime for that service. So that's all part of the advantages of, of, of an SD-WAN solution. So next thing is kind of what is an intelligent edge? So intelligent edge computing, that's where you're sort of putting the processing in the data center or the data processing requirements on an IT side closer uh, to that end customer, closer to the computing architecture. So within that element of computing, okay, Bain predicts is going to be something like 35% compound annual growth rate for that, hitting 127 billion by 2027. This is the IT computer side. And then within that, within that IT computer side is a network component, and that's where we come in. So the network components of intelligent edge computing are internet access of a wide variety, uh, SD-WAN for all of its reasons, and then network security. So the three selling opportunities to make SD-WAN and intelligent edge so huge for us, so combine that 127 billion plus the 100 billion from the previous slide, and you're going to get a, a, a trip, and, and along with 35% combined annual growth rate, you get a lot of opportunity. 
And, and they'll be focused on three things, two of which we sell a lot of. We sell a lot of network access uh, and we sell some network security and some managed control. So SD-WAN and managed SD-WAN, it turns that access sale into a strategic solutions mix. And that's gonna hold you to the customer and, 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 and provide extra ammunition for that TA and TSD to hold that customer in the long run. So what do we mean by that? Well, I'll give you an idea here. So let's talk about this. We have on one side is strategic relationship over time. On the other side is the complexity of the services. And if we look at this, we can get a better sense as to um, how the more complex the service, the stickier it gets, uh, your relationship with the customer will be far more in depth. So in this first one, you see network slot, network services. That's really the commodity stuff that we do every day, the fiber, the LTE, 5G, legacy voice, et cetera. Then we get into overlay, we get into a little more complex products. And then we get into managed services where we're talking about managed SD-WAN, managed Wi-Fi, managed voice services. We're at the highest point of relationship with that customer. So options are the key, we believe, to selling more SD-WAN. And there are several leading SD-WAN equipment makers out there with different approaches um, to solving the same kind of network management security issues that customers are asking for. And the interesting thing is these companies, all of them, several, some of them are wildly successful with, with huge amounts of upside growth for them. And that really underscores our, our whole thesis here, which is that these guys are approaching the management and the monitoring and the features of SD-WAN and the security levels of SD-WAN in different ways. And it, it doesn't mean it's a bad way one way or the other. And we know that because these companies are very successful. What we're saying is that not one customer, just like you can't just sell uh, one circuit from one carrier or, one, or just circuits from one carrier and expect that to fulfill the access requirements for your customers, we believe the same applies to SD-WAN. And so it's important for us as a communication service provider to have multiple SD-WAN options that we know and understand and can implement for customers, multiple options, so it gives you better selling opportunities and better ways in which to fit the customer's specific requirements. So we also think in doing that, since now we're gonna have a lot of vendors and a lot of moving parts, it's vital for that, um, for that technology advisor to partner with a CSP like NHC, the communication stack provider, so we can work with that customer to help them design and fit their own requirements. Implement it correctly, install it, support it 7 by 24 by 365. And we've got a 10-year track record of designing, installing, and maintaining SD-WAN solutions. So we've been around since really this business started for our, started in the channel. And I'll add a couple of things here. Customers are definitely buying. You can see by the compound annual growth rates. You can see by where the market's buying. Customers are buying SD-WAN. The question is, are they going to buy it from you? And what we say is you don't have to be a network engineer to sell SD-WAN solutions. But TAs do need to understand the advantages of selling the different flavors of it and what are the approaches to kind of getting, you know, hitting it with the customer, making sure you're, you're fulfilling their requirements so that you get the sale versus someone else because we know they're buying it. So there's two types of SD-WAN prospects that we see. The first is the customer either already has SD-WAN and they're not happy with their provider. And this is something we do notice out there. Um, or the second is they know what they need. They already have kind of spec'd it out and designed it. So they're really just looking for somebody to help them implement the technology. So with this scenario, we think that, you know, frankly, the TA's job is to convince the prospect to work with th that particular TA and not somebody else uh, to purchase and, and implement the service. <clears throat> We see a lot more of this type of sale, the educated uh, consumer motivated to want to do a change. Now, there is problems with, with this type of customer that we all have to be aware of. 
And, and those problems are that the customer may have some preconceived notions in terms of what they're looking for. And those notions may not be very well worked out. So you really kind of have to talk them through that process. And that's what, that's what we're there for. We have our, our experts that can really discuss with them in some detail what, what may fit and what might fit. And surprisingly enough, a lot of times we end up changing their mind because we, we kind of have a better experience level in terms of what might be best for that customer. So that's your first type of scenario. Second type is the prospect is interested in SD-WAN, but they need more information on how to uh, look at that technology and how it will work for them. I always like to say for both of these examples, always think in terms of what's the problem the customer currently has? What is your, what's your solution? What are the benefits of that solution? And then for complex services like this, what is the process for getting it implemented? Those are all very important things to cover uh, when a customer makes a move like this, because SD-WAN networks or removing an MPLS and replacing it with SD-WAN is a big deal. It does take some time and effort for that customer uh, to be able to get this process done cleanly. So this is an example here where you have to now sell the service in this prospect scenario too. So you got to state the value propositions. You know what are they? Well, you got the network savings, you got the management, you got the security. And then there are multiple approaches that you can use to resolve existing customer network issues. And what would be some of those common network issues that should really be signposts for selling SD-WAN? How about reducing costs over existing MPLS? It's nice to save money. Grappling with network management issues without adding extra personnel. I think this is a huge one. Okay, the customer's got a more complex network. Um, they've got security issues. Uh, they really understand the value of SD-WAN. And one of the things they wanna do is they would like to have those management monitoring QoS features of SD-WAN, and they don't wanna to have to hire any additional people. They're already super busy. They've got headcount issues. So they're looking to do an enhanced service. Remember, what SD-WAN buys the customer is not just some savings and monitoring, with QoS, they're also going to deliver a better quality of service to their customers. That is the end, end businesses, users of their network. So this is all about giving that end customer, making that end customer look great by giving them features they've never had before. But at the same time, you don't want them to hire five people to have to run this thing. This should be designed to be able to use existing staff and then leverage the services of NHC to be able to help with that. Next is the need for more increased network security. Uh, obviously, you know, we know that uh, applications are being pushed uh, to the home. So the whole network edge itself is now uh, gone in different directions. For instance, at NHC, we have 65 people that work remotely outside of our branches all over the United States. So we have to extend the edge of our network out to those folks' homes, and we have to have a security and support for, for that. And, and we're not different than any kind of modern company where there could be hundreds of employees scattered all over the United States and Canada. So it could also be all of the above. So I, if I keep sounding like I'm repeating the same value proposition, I am because I want you folks to be thinking about these are the big themes of selling SD-WAN and selling Intelligent Edge. So the five strategies, uh, that we think are important to understand, again, for this type of customer who hasn't ever, you know, has not purchased SD-WAN, has an idea they want it, but don't know a lot about it. And that would be, first and foremost, educate and consult. Great part of, I think, a TA's job is to educate and consult that end customer. Understand what the specific challenges are, um, understand what the goals could be for that potential client, and position that SD-WAN as a strategic solution and try to identify where their pain points are, and you know, such as network performance issues, such as scalability limitations or, cons or, or security concerns. Next, demonstrate ROI. So we've noticed that uh, a lot of customers who have extensive MPLS networks are still using a lot of private networking, uh, are, you know, are concerned, they wanna make the change to SD-WAN for all the advantages we talked about, 
but they've got to do it in a gradual basis. They're just too complex. It's too risky. And so that's where we say, you know, sort of demonstrate ROI by taking a portion of that network and converting it from whatever they used to have uh, to, uh, to, to a SD-WAN network and being able to sort of play with the management features, see what the, what the dollar savings are. It's a great way to basically uh, siege sell your way into selling a lot more network to that customer. Differentiate from competitors. There are individual SD-WAN providers. There are MSPs. There's lots of players out there, but there are very few companies that can offer what the communication stack provider, what NHC can offer, because we have products for all three of these areas. We have every, just about every network access vendor in, in, in Canada and, and in the United States that we could offer. We have a variety of SD-WAN solutions and we have a variety of security solutions. So we could bring all of that together. We, we can eliminate the finger pointing that comes from um, a TA going with different players for each one of these segments. Uh, so it makes it very clean for both the TA, the TSD, uh, and the end customer to buy from NHC. And that de demonstrating ROI and proof of concept are very similar examples. Uh, again, you're, you're, you're going to look for a part of the network to sort of prove something out, show them what the savings could be. Um, and we could certainly demonstrate for you what that could be. We also have case studies we'll be talking about later on today. And then what does all this do? Well, this, this all builds a very long-term relationship with you and the customer. With a successful installation, with it from the planning stage, implementation, billing accurately, and then ongoing management helps to position yourself way more strategically with that customer. And really helps to proactively identify any of the customer's uh, concerns that SD-WAN can resolve. So with that, we've talked about the marketplace, we've talked about uh, selling uh, and, and the methods that we believe work best for selling uh, SD-WAN. We've talked about why strategic selling is important uh, for our channel. Uh, let's, let's now talk a little bit about our solution and also some case studies with Brent. All right, thanks so much, Glenn. Uh, and, and certainly appreciate uh, everyone taking a little time out of their day to uh, to talk to your at NHC. So Glenn did a great job of talking about why, uh, you know, why SD-WAN is an important piece to, to what we sell. I wanna take a little bit closer look uh, at, at the actual solutions themselves. Uh, just do a quick overview. We'll talk quickly about, you know, why, what NHC does and why we feel like uh, from a managed service standpoint, uh, you know, we provide a little bit of a differentiator there for us. Uh, and uh, take a quick look at a few case studies, as Glenn mentioned, to talk about the different types of customers that we see, and you know, and, and how we've used the the options that we have, the, the solutions that we have to fit the customer's need. So, taking a quick look here, uh, we're going to talk about four different solutions today, very quickly. Uh, one that many are very familiar with, which is the VMware uh, now Broadcom Velo Cloud solution. Uh, Big Leaf networks, uh, and, and those more your traditional cloud-based SD-WAN services. Uh, and newer to the market, uh, but we're very excited about is uh, you know Fortinet, and they're they're continually uh, evolving their SD-WAN product as well as Checkpoint. So the top here we have, like I said, more of the traditional cloud-based uh, uh, SD-WAN solutions, and at the bottom half you see a more security centric approach uh, while also offering uh, the, the, the SD-WAN capability. We'll talk a little bit about how, you know, those are, are they're, they're different, uh, how, they, how they accomplish that, but providing very much the same service. So again, many of you are familiar with VeloCloud, uh, you know, uh, focused on not only cloud uh, applications and, and, and that, that site to cloud traffic, but also very good at uh, replacing uh, legacy MPLS uh, solutions. You know, the, the dynamic path optimization, the WAN link aggregation that VeloCloud provides uh, while having a, a really, really solid uh, functionality when it comes to steering traffic 
business policies, how, how you uh, control those applications. So a site to site connectivity, site to cloud connectivity, Velo Cloud is very strong in that area. Also offers you know robust uh, support for uh, WAN to LAN and, and routing protocols. Big Leaf is a little bit different uh, is from an SD WAN provider. Uh, we refer to Big Leaf as WAN optimization. That's really what the intent of Big Leaf. It's the sort of the niche they that they fill. Uh, it's really intended to work with a router or firewall that's already on site. It delivers static public IP addresses uh, from the cloud. So ingress and egress is coming from a static public IP. Vendors who want to keep their uh, firewalls in place, or even in some regards, if we feel like the solution is right, it might be a Big Leaf uh, uh, SD-WAN device with a Fortinet or Checkpoint firewall behind it. It really depends, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a future slide, really what the customer is trying to solve. We need to really understand where their pain points are, uh, what would their future looking, like what where they plan to be in, in three, four, five years, and really put the right solution together. But the real big differentiator with Big Leaf is it does very much the same thing from the WAN out uh, you know, to the cloud, the cloud gateways are redundant. Uh, you know, there's still the WAN link aggregation and uh, the dynamic path optimization that you get with other SD WAN providers, but they're focused on the WAN. They stay away from uh, providing that LAN routing support. So we need a device behind it to do that, whether that's the customers uh, or whether that's that's something that NHC is providing. Uh, you know, we really saw this as a as a we needed to put this in the portfolio. A lot of customers uh, that we in past would have used VeloCloud SD-WAN, but they really wanted that public IP address assigned directly to their firewall. Uh, you know, we still do uh, a, a, a lot of uh, solutions, a lot of installs with customers who are choosing to maintain their security posture. Uh, and, and we, we say we don't, we, we want to provide them that that WAN link optimization. We want to provide that best in class experience uh, in the redundancy, the resiliency in their network. Uh, this allows us to do that without them having to really change much on on their LAN infrastructure. So, as I said before, newer to the game, uh, but rapidly evolving into a you know into a much larger player in the space is Fortinet. Uh, so, customers that are looking for that security posture but really want the SD-WAN functionality as well. Uh, Fortinet's doing a really good job with that. Another key differentiator for Fortinet is they do have that all-in-one solution. Uh, they're, they provide uh, and support the FortiGate switches and the Forta WAPs. So you have an all-in-one, they all participate inside the Fortinet uh, security fabric. So you have that all-in-one solution. It's in a single pane of glass. Uh, you know, you, you can see the customer's entire environment. You're not looking at, you know, disparate pieces uh, for potentially who's managing the switches or how are we managing those? Who's got the Wi-Fi? We can provide an all-in-one solution that's security focused with the SD-WAN functionality. And last on the list here is Checkpoint. Again, Checkpoint, they're continuing to evolve. I think Glenn mentioned it earlier. Uh, you see that all the vendors want to get into the SD-WAN uh, space. Uh, you have security vendors who are, who are security first that are coming into that market. You also have SD-WAN uh, vendors who are trying to move into, uh, you know, into the security space. They all cut their teeth on what they do best, and they're rapidly evolving into making sure they can provide that full suite. And Checkpoint uh, is in that, uh, in that category. Both Checkpoint and Fortinet uh, accomplish SD-WAN in a very similar fashion where they're using that, that, in, that application layer inspection, the deep packet inspection to do the traffic steering uh, using active active circuits. It's not quite the same what we see with the SD-WAN providers where you're really looking at a, an aggregated tunnel uh, using that dynamic path optimization uh, and getting that true aggregated bandwidth uh, inside an encapsulated tunnel. Uh, they're using active active circuits to accomplish this. So it's not quite as elegant as what we would consider some of the traditional SD-WAN, but they accomplish the same thing. Again, it really boils down to what is the customer, right? What is their what are their pain points, what are their needs, and what does their future look like? We want to 
provide solutions. We want to put solutions in that are future forward, right? Future looking and, and not have to look at, you know, what do we need to do in two years from now to, to kind of get them where they need to be? Are they looking at migrating more of their services to the cloud? How do we best enable that customer uh, to have that, that growth path, uh, you know, and, and future-proof their solution the best we can? So how do we identify the right solution? We talked, we just talked very briefly about four uh, different solutions. And, and again, I, kind of what Glenn said, we maybe feel like we're repeating some things here, but it is really important. This is the one of the biggest takeaways uh, that I think anyone could have from this, and that is understanding the, what the customer needs and what they're trying to accomplish. They may have their mindset on a particular technology, SDY technology that they've heard is great, uh, when we have a conversation with that customer, sometimes we actually, through that conversation, say, I think there's actually a better solution here for you that gets you exactly what you need uh, and, and fits you know, not only what they're trying to accomplish, but price point. And there's many considerations. Uh, so really ensuring that we understand what problem we're solving uh, allows us to, you know, to put the right technology in place. Uh, so there's really three buckets here. Uh, and again, this is very, uh, you know, this is sort of at the 10,000 foot level, but you, you got the, the customers who are really cloud focused. They've got a cloud migration strategy or are, are, their services are already in the cloud. Big Leaf and, and Velo Cloud are, are certainly strong in this area. Their gateways reside in the cloud. Uh, the Velo Cloud specifically is very easy to integrate with AWS and Azure and services like that. Uh, via, you know, tunnels uh, out to those services. Uh, you know, like I say, Big Leaf has uh, a very similar cloud gateway infrastructure, uh, but with Big Leaf, there's a little bit more work on the back end that has to, to go into that. But from a true resiliency standpoint, you're talking about redundancy at the edge. You're talking about redundancy all the way through uh, the cloud gateways. If you lose a gateway, uh, there is a, a backup gateway that your public IP uh, ingress and egress continues to work through even if you lose, if they lose a, a large pop. Simplicity versus control. And this one's a, a little tricky because, you know, obviously as NHC, these are fully managed solutions. Uh, we want to provide that value to the customer, but is the customer looking for us to simply do that WAN optimization? They're going to keep their network infrastructure in place. Big Leaf offers that very simple plug and play. Uh, from a firewall vendor standpoint, all they're really doing is changing, right? The public IP on the outset of their firewall is changing. Now, they may have some things from site to site, and they may have some, you know, maybe some VPN tunnels going out to services in the cloud or, or other sites that they might have to reconfigure, but it allows them to leave their LAN relatively untouched, and we can provide that LAN optimization. That's a, a big differentiator for, uh, for Big Leaf. VeloCloud, Fortinet, Checkpoint, they're very much more, you know, uh, full routing support, both WAN and LAN, uh, and, and just more features, right? More robust feature set uh, that we can leverage to, to give customers, uh, you know, whatever they need from a managed LAN standpoint. And then lastly, security, Fortinet and Checkpoint certainly are the, the leaders here. Uh, they're both, you know, leaders uh, in the Magic Quadrant, the Gardner Magic Quadrant. You know, every year, they're the security uh, vendors that we've chosen to, to work with uh, and, and partner with uh, are leaders in that space. They continue, again, to evolve their, uh, their solutions and provide, you know, a, a really good experience. All of these vendors, you know, they do provide, uh, and I think Glenn mentioned this earlier, too, that single pane management, that, uh, that ability that provides NHC, right, to manage these services provides us that great visibility into the network, into the environment, what's happening, allows us to be more proactive uh, in managing that customer. So we're gonna take, a, again, a very high level look at what a deployment looks like. And again, I, most people on this call understand uh, the, the steps that it takes to, you know, to install a customer, but to really, you know, kind of hammer home the, uh, a couple of the key points here, that pre-deployment planning and assessment stage, this is the most important step uh, in any SD-WAN uh, deployment. 
That is, again, making sure we are understanding what are we solving? What are the pain points? What are we, what do we need to do, uh, you know, to, to solve the problems that the customer is having? Even if they're not, if, if there's not a specific problem, we need to understand the environment and we need to be able to say, well, there might be a potential gotcha here now that we're talking through this. There might be a better solution. Uh, you know, we want to talk about that as early on in the process as we can, make sure that everybody has the tools to make the right decisions uh, you know, as to what the right solution might be. Again, we've seen where uh, customers have, they believe they have their mindset on a particular solution, but having the options allows us to, to say, yes, we can do that for you, Mr. Customer, but here are some other options you might want to look at, potentially cost savings, potentially just a better fit for what they're trying to solve. The next part is that technology selection and, and really the, the, the network architecture, design, the design piece. Now that we've you know, firmly set on a solution, uh, we need to get the finer details uh, ironed out to make sure that when we get into the design phase, uh, into the, the actual build uh, and configuration stage, that we eliminate any potential problems that we might find, you know, that, that we had. You're never going to find 100%, uh, but through those conversations, uh, you know, in concert with our, our project management team, who does a fantastic job, along with the engineers who are going to have those conversations, uh, we need to dig in, we need to understand the network and be able to design around that and any challenges there might be there. Uh, the, the middle phase here, right, we're going to go into production, we're going to design it, we're going to build it, and we're going to get the devices out there. And, and get them cut over. A lot of testing, right? Testing, testing, testing here is really important uh, to uncover any of those potential gotchas that the customer simply didn't know. Um, you know, we do often run into that where there are just things the customer uh, did not know uh, and they might be in between vendors. Uh, you know, they may have never had a data vendor and just aren't sure. Uh, so we do our best obviously to uncover as much of that as we can during the, uh, design phase, uh, but the testing, again, is the most important piece to make sure we get the rest of that. So testing, testing, and more testing. We've got to validate the service. We've got to make sure that any critical applications, right, anything the customer uses, we want to test all of that and make sure it's working. And, I, and so the, I think the first, the, the, obviously, the, that conversation at the beginning is super important because you want to make sure you've identified the right solution. But I think the differentiator for NHC uh, outside of, I think, our great project management, uh, you know, and ability to deliver the services is the ongoing network management, the life cycle management of a solution is the most important. And as I mentioned before, the tools that we have at our disposal to be able to be pro to proactively monitor and, and manage uh, the solution, the access uh, that we often sell along with these, uh, having NHC is not only managing the access, but managing the device we have the visibility into what's going on with that circuit right there at our fingertips. So we're able to make that de decision quickly. Is this potentially a, a, a software or right, a device issue? Is this a circuit issue? And our teams work closely together uh, to make sure that we, we identify that uh, and we move it on. So life cycle management is, is the, the real key, I believe the differentiator uh, for NHC. Uh, and all the services that we're talking about are, you know, fully managed services. It's NHC responsi responsibility to, you know, design it, to install it, and to provide that proactive management and support. And of course, along with that comes, you know, firmware and software updates, any updates to the environment that need to happen. Uh, you know, we, NHC is taking full responsibility uh, for that, uh, you know, during uh, the life cycle. So we'll finish up by looking at a couple of case studies. So I think this is good because it, it does give an idea of where not only, you know, what we typically see, the customers we typically see, but also, uh, you know, where something may be a better fit and where we've talked about, you know, different solutions and come to the, the, the right conclusion. Uh, so customer number one, I'm actually really familiar with this one, uh, a municipality and, you know, a mid-sized municipality. And they were struggling with what the, the right solution was. Uh, and there was a couple of requirements they had. 
uh, the customer actually came to us originally and, and uh, thought uh, or felt strongly that they wanted VeloCloud SD WAN because they heard a lot of great things about it. Uh, but as we started talking through what they what they need design wise and, and and where their pain points were, they needed static public IP addressing directly on uh, their voice gateways, and they had redundant gateways uh, backing each other up. Uh, in two different data centers uh, for the municipality. And the VeloCloud SD-WAN solution was not going to fit exactly the way we needed it to. We talked to them about how we could solve this with Big Leaf, but still give them uh, you know, the WAN optimization and the QoS for the voice that they were, that, you know, they were looking for. Uh, it accommodated both of those requirements and specifically because the customer was going to maintain their existing firewall they were going to, you know, continue, uh, uh, you know, their existing contract for their security services, and this allowed us to get the customer what they were really looking for for NHC to manage. And again, having both the access and the SD WAN provides us that visibility all the way through that path. Uh, in in during the early stages of the implementation, we did work through, uh, uh, you know, some challenges with them with their voice services. But the visibility that we have into the services allowed us to quickly identify the issues and help their voice vendor, uh, you know, overcome those challenges. So that you say like that 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 ability to say, yes, we can do the VeloCloud SD WAN if you if you'd like. Uh, here's some things that we'll have to do um, to make that work. But here's a service that's actually designed uh, to do exactly what you want to do. Case number, uh, case study number two was a manufacturing uh, a customer. Uh, and this is a really good example for what Glenn was talking about earlier. They had a legacy MPLS network. Uh, they were having some performance <clears throat> issues. They were moving a lot of their backup and, and some of their services into the cloud. They were struggling with that connectivity. Uh, and, you know, th this the, the they were seeing uh, a lot of slowness in that uh, you know uh, in the data transfers, especially large data transfers, uh, and so VM the VMware VeloCloud solution was chosen uh, you know as the solution for this customer, uh, and specifically because it was site to site traffic was extremely important to them, but it was also their migration strategy to the cloud, the VeloCloud uh, solution. Uh, has the dynamic site-to-site -site, uh, tunneling uh, that replaces uh, most traditional MPLS networks, as well as the ease of connectivity to cloud services like AWS and Azure uh, that allowed us to bring all of that into the VeloCloud Cloud environment and see a, a, a really good increase uh, you know, uh, in, in the speed uh, in which the data was transferring, but also having the control, the multiple uh, access methods connected to the VeloCloud. Cloud getting that WAN link aggregation, speeding up the process as opposed to that traditional uh, MPLS uh, service. And the last, uh, actually this is another example that we talked a little bit earlier about, is a nationwide retailer and their problem was they were just struggling with managing multiple vendors. They had an SD-WAN vendor, they had a security vendor, they had some other switching infrastructure, uh, a lot of a lot of piece parts, right? A lot of things to manage, and different people managing those different things. So when something goes bump in the night, you're going through potentially two or three different vendors. You're going through the unfortunate finger pointing of having two or three vendors. I think we've all seen that before, uh, and we and certainly we want to avoid that when we can. So what we landed on with this customer was the Fortinet uh, solution. And specifically because it is an all-in-one solution, we, we're giving them the WAN optimization with the SD-WAN functionality, but also we reduce the complexity of their network, the switches, the wireless access points, uh, and moved everything into a single pane, allows NHC to take full control over the management of that and the proactive uh, uh, management of, of trouble resolution. And the customer uh, could not be happier you know, with the results of that and, and putting everything, you know, in, into that bucket where they know who to call when there's a problem. So 
uh, that wraps up uh, you know the, the presentation. Uh, we're certainly uh, uh, excited, and, and if anyone has any questions, uh, you know we'd like to go ahead and uh, and dive in. Of course, yeah, and that was a great presentation, gentlemen. Uh, for those who happen to be attending CVX Expo this year, and I'm sure I mentioned that uh, NHC is a platinum sponsor for the event. Uh, they'll be at booth 2001, as well as meeting room Dove H. So if you want to learn more from NHC, be sure to stop by CVX Expo. Platinum sponsor NHC will be there. Uh, guys, uh, do you want to remind people where else they can go online for more information before we dive in? Yeah, sure. It's nhcgrp.com. That's our website. Okay, fantastic. And let me remind all you guys right now, once again, uh, that if you want to contribute to the conversation, just click on the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen there, and uh, we're going to get started. Uh, first off, guys, uh, how does SD-WAN handle different types of traffic? So depending on the technology, certainly there's variations, uh, you know, in that depending on what vendor, you know, we're talking about. Uh, with the traditional SD-WAN vendors, you're really looking at the application layer, the different types of traffic. There's more, there's a deeper inspection that happens with SD-WAN that allows it to look at uh, what type of application is being used and steer that and prioritize that uh, based on the application. Uh, so that, you know, the, the, the firewall vendors are doing something very similar, uh, you know, check, uh, Checkpoint, Fortinet, even Cisco with their firewalls where you're looking at, um, they're already doing deep pack and inspection as part of that next gen firewall capability. So it was an easy lift really for uh, these, uh, like, like the Fortinets of the world to start offering uh, some SD-WAN capability. They were already doing that as part of the security solution. I say the typical SD-WAN, uh, talking about, you know, Big Leaf, uh, VeloCloud, uh, they're just looking at the application. They have pre-baked uh, quality of service uh, and business policies that route and steer traffic based on the type of application it is. And we have full control over those business policies as well. So if you have a critical application that doesn't fall into that bucket, we can add that business policy and say, we need to give this uh, you know, this particular application priority. I'll give you one example uh, of that. Most VoIP traffic uh, traditionally is on port 5060. We do see some vendors who will send that traffic on 5070. Well, 5070 doesn't fall into that traditional VoIP bucket. It may be getting ignore, ignored by the QoS. We add that into the, into the uh, business policy. Now we're prioritizing that VoIP traffic. That's just one example of how we can, you know, how easy it is to modify and make sure that we're giving that quality of service to the customer. All right, fantastic and very smart stuff. Um, this person wants to know specifically, uh, they heard that SD-WAN is a bit of an MPLS killer. Why is that, do you think? Sure, so um, in, when it started to come on around 10 years ago, when SD-WAN uh, you know, first came on the marketplace, um, it, it's always fun in our business because we get to see kind of where where are the opportunities and where do things uh, really, really go. And it's not just a technological thing. The first thing that people seem to glam onto was the fact that MPLS private networks are expensive to maintain. The networks themselves are more expensive. The access components are more expensive than internet. And we could run broadband internet on, on SD-WAN and we could use the power of SD-WAN to control the QoS so that the, cir the circuit itself is just a lot cheaper. Um, and that's where the initial savings was. So you heard very early on that this was an MPLS killer because it could give you the features of MPLS, but that the network cost would be a lot less money. Yeah, I would I would add, right, the, so yeah, the circuit agnostic approach uh, to SD-WAN and in combination with, with NHC, we do access very well. It's, it really is a, a great match. We're going to find you the best access. And because of these SD-WAN solutions not being tied like a traditional MPLS network that is tied to a single vendor or single carrier, uh, that's the, a lot of the cost cutting. And I would say the visibility to the network uh, and the visibility that we can get, yes, traditional legacy you know, MPLS networks uh, through carriers, um, 
having managed MPLS networks many years ago, the visibility that that these SD WAN solutions provide us, ease of troubleshooting and, and trouble resolution, honestly, is another uh, another uh, MPLS killer. Yeah, uh -huh. it's older technology. I mean, it's been around since uh, the Clinton administration. So you know, it, it, it's it's it, but it provided very secure communications for those types of applications that demanded it. Uh, it's just that now most uh, you know, uh, there's few reasons to stay with an MPLS network. Let's put it that way. Oh, sure. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, this person wants to know how an SD WAN solution can kind of be used to scale across multiple regions. Yeah. So th this is a great one, I think, yeah. and this is where again some of the traditional SD WAN vendors really shine. Uh, you know, using VeloCloud and Bitleaf as an example. So they have nationwide uh, points of presence or gateways, uh, depending on what, which technology, what terminology they like to use. But based on that geographic region, uh, the device itself is going to look for that closest gateway is to reduce latency, right? And, and reduce that, the number of hops. So as you build uh, an, uh, an SD-WAN environment uh, and you're, you might be geographically dispersed, uh, you know, the, the, the devices are going to look for that closest gateway, and the latency between the gateways is much is is much less, right? It's a it's a private backbone uh, when you get there. Uh, so when you're talking about a large nationwide customer, uh, and we have a, a couple who we've really seen this uh, you know shine through, is that ability to uh, scale a nationwide uh, you know uh, network and allow those devices to find the closest gateway and get out to the internet while still taking advantage of all the SD-WAN, uh, you know, technology, the overlay, the underlay, uh, you know, and the ability to aggregate that bandwidth. All of that across the entire uh, country and in Canada is accomplished by having those geographically dispersed uh, gateways and points of presence. All right. And this one asks specifically about uh, kind of the ongoing network management aspect. Uh, they want to know if you have a team that assists with installation and future servicing and all that stuff. So we do. We have a, a, our solutions assurance team, uh, and they are uh, involved both in the implementation design, uh, you know, onboarding, installation, and uh, in lifecycle management and support. Uh, it is a dedicated team for SD WAN uh, and security offerings. They are, uh, you know, that that entry point into NHC when something goes bump in the night. Uh, and again, along with from an onboarding standpoint, I see I, I I can't give our our project management teams, you know, enough credit. They do a fantastic job during the onboarding process to make sure the customer is getting what they need, to make sure that we're that we're hitting the. The timeline uh, that they requested, but the solutions assurance team, from a technical standpoint, they are our, you know, they're our one hand to shake with these uh, solutions. I think that's very important. That's one of the reasons, as I pointed out earlier, is is you have to have resources, which we do, to support multiple flavors of SD WAN and security. And uh, we wouldn't have done this if we weren't ready to be able to do that and build up a good customer base and experience working with all of these uh, different upstream vendors. And we think that's a big advantage for our channel and for, you know, TAs and TSDs that are working with us, that we have this capability, we have the expertise, and we do believe that this is a product that needs to have, you know, uh, good and knowledgeable support and ongoing management. It's part of the overall process of selling this service. Um, and the fact that it combines with selling network is which is what we all do great is sort of the cherry on top. Uh, we're seeing lots of great questions kind of coming in. Once again, guys, use the Q&A tab if you want to contribute to the discussion. Uh, this is more of a, an opinion question, but I think it's a really good one. Uh, do you see kind of SASE or, or SSE playing a bigger role going forward? Uh, SD-WAN would uh, kind of just be a node for access optimizer in the framework. And they're asking specifically for like a a branch office, home office, mobility type of setup? I, I think the, the answer is definitely yes. And I think that the most likely, you know, what we are seeing, of course, is, um, you know, when uh, when the term SASE 
uh, you know, first came to play, it's similar to SDUN, right? When SDUN kind of became a, 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 a you know, a, a, a big part of everyone's nomenclature, uh, you know, th there's, it depends on you, there's multiple interpretations of what SASE is, but I think uh, the security vendors certainly are in a better position there. They're catching up with the SD-WAN. Uh, we're seeing solutions come out that, uh, that are much more focused on that hybrid work environment uh, where I'll, uh, just giving an example of, of what I'm talking about is, you know, Checkpoint uh, in combination, they, they purchased a, a company called Perimeter 81 a few years ago, and they're folding what Perimeter 81 did into their architecture. What Perimeter 81 did very well is, you know, they have that, that agent that runs on uh, your devices. It doesn't matter if you're at an airport, if you're at home. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are. It's sending that traffic through uh, through the firewall, getting inspected, making sure that you're not in any policy um, that, that the business wants to apply. If they walk into their home office, if they walk into a branch office, it says, hey, I recognize that network. It, it turns the agent off. You're, you're immediately on. Things like that, that's what we're seeing more of. These The companies knowing that they have to, A, account for a distributed workforce, but also that hybrid approach, you know, we hear that term zero trust happen a lot, right? And that's what we're all trying to get to is that zero trust network access because eventually, right, you don't trust anything. <laughs> the, the whole idea of zero trust is you don't trust any network, uh, right? Except the, uh, uh, one, like for example, in your, uh, in your home office. So I do think that hybrid remote, um, you might see people moving away from the traditional SD WAN, like potentially like putting a small Bella cloud in at a at a um, at a home office, and more of a security first appliance that gives them some of that aggregation, um, but but allows them to connect securely and safely to their corporate network. And that's why we say stack. You know, so we say SD WAN. Yes, we have all of that product, but as I pointed out, and what Brenda pointed out is the. The family of edge solutions we're calling that stack edge. Sassy fits in that. It's you know last last word is edge. So so all of those edge type uh, products to support edge computing uh, that fits into our stack edge group, and we we intend to uh, continue to grow those that solutions mix uh, as time goes by. All right, now we're rapidly running out of time here, gentlemen. But I'm going to try and squeeze a couple more questions in because I think they're good ones. Uh, how are SD-WAN devices integrated into your portal specifically and, and not the vendor's portal? Is there like a single portal a customer can use for security and uh, SD-WAN device management? So we are continuing to work on, right now, they're not fully integrated into our customer map portal. Uh, we're continually actually, we're, we spent a lot of time in the last year looking at uh what we need to do to at least provide visibility to the active environment. Uh, obviously we have full access, management access to all these portals, but we have onboarded uh, several services in the last year. So I will admit that we're a little bit behind in the development of getting the, the uh, visibility of those solutions into the customer portal. Uh, you know, we recently launched, just to give an example, we recently launched the ability to see if you subscribe to our stack guard service, which is the proactive monitoring and management of uh, circuits, if you subscribe to that in the map portal, you can see all of your circuits and the status of that circuit. So uh, we are working on providing more visibility uh, into, um, you know, into our customer uh, portal, the map portal. Uh, the other piece of this too, I think is important is, you know, we, uh, traditionally, uh, you know, launch these services as fully managed services. Uh, so we want to provide visibility to the customer, but we believe our value add is is providing that proactive management. Uh, certainly, we have customers uh, who we uh, are in a co-managed environment with. Uh, but if we look at a, a customer who wants to fully manage their solution, um, where is the NHC value add? There, right. That I think that's that. It, it, certainly, you know, it could be a discussion, uh, but we really, you know, we really pride ourselves in that fully managed solution. Okay. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, any special considerations for security? 
uh, automated OS updates, uh, anything to prevent vulnerabilities? Yeah, so all of these services, uh, not just the two security vendors that we talked about with uh, with uh, Fortinet and Checkpoint, uh, you know, e even the Big Leaf in the Velo Cloud, they receive, you know, proactive updates, uh, specifically the firewalls, that, that those updates happen more frequently because they're not only updating software, they're actually real time updating, uh, you know, their uh, checkpoint for that call them different things. You know, a checkpoint calls it their threat cloud. Uh, they're taking and, and using, you know, artificial intelligence, of course, now they're taking that information across the globe and they're updating their firewalls in real time. If a vulnerability is uh, discovered uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, you know, an hour ago, your firewall is getting updated. Uh, you know, once they discover that vulnerability and mitigate it, uh, Fortinet is very similar. They're getting real time. You hear the term zero day. Uh, zero day protection is exactly that. They are updating uh, their databases, their threat databases, uh, you know, uh, real time and pushing those uh, updates down to uh, devices. Okay, and with that said, I, I'm going to close things down. Uh, gentlemen, I'll provide you guys with a list of some of the questions that we had in case there's anything else that we didn't get to cover during this session. Uh, but I want to thank you, uh, Glenn Nelson and Brent Lucas, for your time here today. It was really, really interesting. I want to thank the people that joined, and I also want to thank the great questions, guys. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much. All right, and the Amazon gift card winners will be contacted after the webinar by uh, a representative from NHC. Uh, also yep. a reminder that if you guys missed any of this webinar or any of the past Channel Vision presentations, uh, you can go on demand, visit channelvisionmag.com and they're all right there. Um, also, real quick plug for CVX Expo 24. Again, as I mentioned, NHC is a platinum sponsor. Uh, returns to the, to the Talking Stick Resort for the third year running. That's in Scottsdale, Arizona, November 12th or 14th. Um, visit NHC at booth 2001, as well as meeting room Dove H. CVX attendees and exhibitors include TSDs, MSPs and resellers, uh, TAs, consultants, wholesale communications, cloud solution, business IT, and security providers. And an all-inclusive ticket uh, grants channel partners access to everything that this event has to offer. For more information or to register, visit cvxexpo.com. And... Uh, I think that's going to do it, guys, really, this time. Uh, from all of us at Channel Vision Magazine, from our good friends at NHC, everybody take care. Be good to one another. Thank you. Thank you.